Are you looking to get better sound and you've been upgrading your components during your hi-fi upgrades? Well, if you're like me, you've been doing it all wrong. And I'm here to tell you how and why and how to change it. So I don't really consider this channel uh, reviews per se. I don't consider myself a reviewer. Reviewers in my mind are typically hung up on what companies claim or the specs and the stats and the, the, the measurements and the this and the that. I don't care about any of that. For me, it's about getting better sound that's more musical, that's more enjoyable. And I'm sharing my audiophile journey with you guys. What works, what doesn't, what I like, what I don't like, how my my tastes of how I understood what I liked to change over time, uh, in my mind, for the better. And it's not always price related. Uh, if you've seen my video, I talk about how, even though I've got an $8,000 Telegartner switch, adding three inexpensive $30 switches by the wall, how that has a dramatic improvement. And, and frankly, if you don't have the money for a big buck switch up front, you can go and get those three switches for under, I th two of them are 30 and one of them is actually 99. So you're into it for 166 bucks or so. But, but I talk about how you don't need to spend a lot of money for great sound. So don't think that I'm somebody that thinks you need to spend a lot of money to get great sound. Having said that, certainly in most instances, as you do spend more money, it opens up better gear, better equipment. So I think that's a reasonable statement that most people will agree with. I originally thought a couple of things. I thought that switches didn't make a difference. I thought that um, digital cables wouldn't make a difference in sound. I also thought that there was a law of diminishing returns, frankly, because that's what you hear on the forums. And you keep hearing these people on the forums, which frankly have never, either never tried on their own or, you know, parroting what they, they think is right and what, they, what they've read or frankly have got a low-fi, low-resolution system. Now that's okay. Guys, I started off with Bose speakers a long time ago, so I'm not knocking them. But for somebody with a low-fi, low-end system to sit there and talk about, well, I tried cables and they didn't make a difference, or and they've never actually tried it themselves, they're missing out. So I reached a point probably about a year ago, and that's why I did the four videos where I genuinely didn't know if a switch and a USB cable or an ethernet cable could make a difference. I actually leaned towards the side of it couldn't. However, I decided to try for myself and, and put aside what everybody on the forums claimed. In my system, to my ears, there was a dramatic difference. There is a huge difference, which stunned me. So I went into it thinking there'd be no difference and I came out of it being a believer. Now, having said that, I've heard some, let's talk ethernet for a minute. I've heard some $400 ethernet cables that are really, really good. Um, actually my best buy ethernet cable, and I, I talk about this in the, in the videos, I'll link to them down below. For a majority of people, it's a, it's a blue jeans ethernet cable. Guys, you can get it for 20 bucks and you gotta spend quite a bit more money to better that. And in fact, I have a blue jeans cable running through all my switches. And then I have a straight wire ethernet running from there to the latest box and switch, and then from the rest, it's all stealth. So from, I, I take that back, actually. There's a Telegartner between the switch, the Telegartner switch, and the optical box, and that's because it's a proprietary Telegartner uh, adapter, it's the M12 adapter, and then I've got all stealth cables from there. So having heard it, there was a difference. Uh, I've heard $1,200 cables, which are mediocre at best. I've heard $300 cables, which beat them. And I've also learned in this journey that there is no such thing as law of diminishing returns. There is big buck gear I have heard, which blows away some of the lesser price gear. It's a huge difference. I mean, it's not even close. So this, this concept of law of diminishing re returns it, are coming from people that have either never heard it or frankly, they maybe they've tried and it's been a bad system or they just don't have good he ears for hearing, which, which is fine, you know, to each their own. I'm not judging. But how has my journey changed what I think? I actually, receiving the stealth cables have been, 
and you'll see this in the other videos, I'll link it to them down below. Many manufacturers, I'm gonna repeat briefly, many manufacturers have told me, let's take the USB cable, for example, between a DAC and your um, streamer. They don't include USB adapters on our connectors on DACs anymore. Berkeley, very, very high end, is a perfect example of that because USB can be so noisy. One of the single greatest improvements I have ever heard in my system is when I tried the Stealth USB cable. And it's because it's got this collar that you can move. If I can show you, it's got this collar that you can move back and forth. And you're finding the point where it rejects the most interference, which is one of the things that's really bad with USBs. They're so noisy. This is the USB T Select. Uh, this literally changed my world. I have never, ever heard such a big difference in any component upgrade as I did with this cable. So the only thing that's been bested by this is their double tune, which has actually got two um, collars. So I can, I can really reject a majority of that sound. And you tweak it to your system and you see what sounds good for you. That was a game changer for me. I am now, I'm about to do another video on their Dream 2020 power cable. I've, I've added their ethernet cable. The only thing left in my system that's not stealth is the speaker cable and the RCA between the DAC and the amp. But where I was going with this, this before was I had an idea. The stealth cables in my system have been so mesmerizing in the change and they changed what I thought better sound was. Over the years with, with better gear and with better cables, I've heard, I always thought better cables would mean more air, more detail, uh, more uh, presence. But the perfect example of how that's, I'm gonna call it a false hi-fi, is when I compared their uh, ethernet both their ethernet and their first USB to my previous reference cable. And what I noticed is that on some of the songs, some of the live music, the audience was a little less detailed with the stealth than the uh, previous reference. But what I realized is it wasn't in fact less detailed. It was more natural. I had been, for lack of a better word, brainwashed into thinking that more detail was better. But what I realized is that it was really tipped up, is that it was artificial in that better hi-fi, and that on my system to my ear, the stealth was dramatically more musical. So that was a game changer for me. And that led me to the idea of, okay, having heard how much the stealth cables change things. Now guys, keep in mind, I don't sell anything. I'm not a retailer. I don't get paid for these reviews. This is my personal audiophile journey. Your mileage may vary. I'm just sharing with you. So I had an idea. I had some friends. Currently, we're running a Luxman integrated, the 509X, which we're looking to, uh, hopefully, we've got some other gear coming on the way soon, which will uh, show you. I'm very excited to talk about, but I don't want don't to ruin that surprise yet in terms of, of amps. But we brought in a Gryphon amp, we brought in the 300, and we brought in a Constellation. Both phenomenal amps approximately double the price of the Luxman. When I used other cables and factory power cables, and I did a Luxman versus Gryphon versus, Const versus Constellation in my system, there was a noticeable improvement in sound. Uh, and maybe improvement isn't the better word. It certainly was different. I thought it did stuff better, but the Luxman is no slouch. Then what I decided to do was to keep the Luxman back in the system and change to stealth ethernet and USB cables. And I left the power cable out at this point. That's for a separate video. And the Luxman with the two stealth cables, which was less expensive, noticeably less expensive than if I had, as a combo, than if I had simply upgraded to either a Constellation or a Gryphon, the Luxman was far superior in terms of naturalness, organicness, a sense of ease, a sense of flow. It was just so much more musical. 
In no way am I saying anything bad about the Gryphon or about the Constellation. They're beautiful. I, I'd, I'd love to have them. I'd love to have them, frankly, with stealth cables. So what I'm saying is the way that this was turned upside down for me is I previously thought you have to spend the most money you can on components to get the best sound possible, and then you would fall, then you would just fall back on cables. And my world has been turned upside down in that belief system. I'm now a believer of getting very good gear and components, and for me, putting in stealth cables at a substantially less cost than getting more expensive components, assuming that's gonna get me better sound. Of course, the obvious caveat is you can't do this with a Tex Techniques receiver or a Yamaha receiver versus something more high-end, top tier type brand and expect that we're still gonna win that game. No, you you need to be in a top tier. Luxman is very, very good. Others, uh, I'm sure AccuPhase would be the same. Others, where you're starting to play in the big boy league. So for me, this is quite a revelation. So much so that I'm now focusing on the rack in regards to that. I've got a Timber Nation rack, which is very, very popular, and I have had a terrible muddy bass problem. Frankly, I thought it was a speaker issue. No matter what I did with the speakers, I couldn't get rid of it. Then I got the Revo Pods, and I put the Revo Pods under my gear, and it was a, a, a huge difference. And I realized that the issue was in fact what some of the higher end rack manufacturers will tell you about is that this is tiger maple that maple specifically has got a a very distinct sound to it and i didn't believe them i didn't believe racks could make that much of a difference but seeing what the revopods isolation did now i did try the iso acoustics isolation feet previously i actually felt that made the sound worse so I went into the Revopods being, frankly, a skeptic because the Revopods made the sound worse. Now, the Revopods use uh, rubber and, and things of that nature. I've come to realize that rubber and wood usually don't go together uh, unless you have a really, really lean system. My system is not lean at all. So seeing the difference the Revopods made, and I, now I've still, I've got probably 70% of that cleared up. I've still got a little bit of that. I'm now looking to upgrade to a more higher end shelf to continue that because in my mind, that is along the same lines as what I'm saying with cables, that to get better gear, but not have, I don't even wanna call them fundamentals because they're not fundamentals. They are, I'm now a believer, equally as important as the gear to have good vibration isolation, to have excellent cables, that you're better off spending less, and again, when I say less, I'm not talking low end, okay? A, a, a less on the gear and, and, and spending more on the cables and the rack to, to really get a substantially better sound than if you just spent the money on the components and did not spend it appropriately on cables and also on the rack or vibration isolation, whether it be a vibration shelf or you can get just shelves or, or feet, or I love the Revopods. The Revopods work on, on anything. So that's what I wanted to share with you that this has really been turned upside down for me. I, I'd love to hear down below in the comments if any of you guys have tried this or what your experience has been. Uh, again, I don't get paid for any of this stuff. I'm just here to share my, my journey with you. This is fun for me. This is a hobby for me. I don't get, I don't make money off of this. So I hope you've learned something, you've gotten something valuable from this. I, I hope I help you in your journey and I'd love to hear from you. So please leave comments below.